All right, guys, here we go with the first chapter, with the first principle. And this one is about center. So I'm starting this uh, um, this series off with, uh, with the center because, I mean, that is the first thing that we want to occupy uh, or the first, basically our first uh, job in our game to control the center in one way in, in in one way or another but definitely the most important thing is to control the center okay so what are we talking about when we're talking about the center so as you can see on the screen it's basically the 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 four middle squares what are what we call the main center squares that are uh, green, okay? So the E4, D4, D5, and E5 squares are the, um, are the main center squares. Those are the squares that we are trying to control. You can see two different, two other uh, colors, uh, the yellow and uh, the red. Uh, colors mean uh, absolutely nothing. Um, I just want to highlight that those are also part of the center um, in a way because uh, the yellow ones so the c4 f4 and c5 f5 are also sort of like part of the center uh, uh, you know they are controlling one of those main uh, center squares and also we have c3 f3 and c6 f6 that are in red um, those aren't necessarily, um, you know, center squares, but they are great support, um, okay, um, for the center. So with C3, um, you know, I might as well um, could have colored uh, D3 and E3 and D6 and E6 as a great support uh, squares for the center but overall when we are talking about the center we talk about the four main squares of e4 d4 d5 e5 we have these um relatively you know main ish center squares with c4 f4 c5 f5 and the rest okay now that's out of the way now we are going to look at uh, different games where one player, um, you know, uh, either fails to occupy the center and pays the price for it, or, you know, throughout these chapters um, in the center part, um, you know, I'm, I'll, I even, I'm even showing you games where one uh, player, you know, values the center so much uh, that even, you know, we are even uh, willing to sacrifice for it, you know. Um, and of course, we'll talk about the center. Uh, why is it important to, to take? Um, why are we putting so much effort into it? What am I, why am I even talking about this? So let's, uh, let's actually move on to the next game or actually to our first game. And this one is a McDonald game, uh, a, a fresh new game uh, from 1834. <laughs> of course, it was one of the, uh, one of the, the earlier uh, games ever uh, recorded, you know, where players started to play professionally. But this is the, this is the, uh, this is the chess era that we call basically the romantic era. And so <clears throat> nowadays, of course, in 2022, it's, it's quite, you know, the art, the chess, uh, chess theory in every aspect is, uh, is, is wildly, uh, different, um, but in terms of principles, we can learn and draw conclusions um, from these games because players didn't actually um, know these principles uh, or not as well as we know now. 
um, and they underestimated or undervalued the importance, for example, the center. And this uh, game is a great example. So uh, let's go on with the game. Uh, I'm actually going to clip the board and we are going to look at it from Black's perspective. So um, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. Um, so, so far it's, uh, it's the start of a Sicilian game. And as you can see, and throughout these uh, games, every single game that I'm showing you, all these games are going to be totally correct, normal, fine games where actually players are following um, the, the opening to a certain uh, extent. Um, so obviously all these games are absolutely, you know, uh, you know, good games per se, um, but still at one point, one player does something that undermines um, these, uh, or, you know, um, doesn't respect uh, the power of the center. So let's go d4. Uh, pawn takes, of course, and knight takes d4, and black goes with e5. So, of course, this is a well-known line even nowadays, and then many uh, players do play it. This is the, the what we call the Kalashnikov line. This is like a brother of the uh, the Sveshnikov line. Uh, uh, completely, completely fine, of course. And this is the first questionable uh, move um, in the game. Knight takes c6. So of course nowadays. Again, in 2022, we have opening theory, we know what to do, and of course, the main move is knight to b5. Um, why? Uh, so let's, um, let's, let's talk about this. Of course, many of these games and many of these ideas, um, you know, we can connect or we could, I could have put it in the development or, um, you know, so there are going to be like connections between those, uh, these games. Um, but that's okay. It's just, uh, it just goes to show you how important these principles are, no matter where we are, what we do, uh, who's the opponent and so on and so forth. So, um, so knight b5, why? Because, well, uh, when we, uh, uh, take out of the center, right? Whether with a pawn or with a piece, especially especially when we have a center pawn, way we have a centralized uh, piece. Um, it's not necessarily, uh, you know, the smartest thing to do because, well, just like in this in this game or just like in this position, now we, white has an active uh, an active centralized knight on d4. Black has a, a normal knight on c6. But why do I really want to? uh take there not really so principle wise it's definitely not optimal um the only time i would take there if i have a follow-up so this is something that we can learn that if you make a principally a principled quote-unquote bad move or not optimal move you always have to have a follow-up because again taking out of the center is not very good because uh, well, you lose it, the, the your active knight, and also it makes the black's pawn structure a whole lot better, and it it allows black to actually take control of the center by playing uh, this move d5 that actually uh, happened in the game. So uh, white uh, white followed it with bishop c4, which is a very natural move. Of course, he plays around d5 for now. That's and that's good. Knight f6. Uh, and now bishop g5 again another questionable move with de well with development and uh, of course i'm going to mention this in the development section um uh in the series but when we are developing with the piece this is some uh something that i want you guys to remember and try to implement this idea in your games um we always try to develop with the piece that we know where it's going, if, if that makes sense. So do we know that the bishop is, is most certainly going to g5 in this game? I'm not 100% sure, right? So perhaps it is going to g5, perhaps it is going to e3, perhaps it's not going anywhere. I don't know, we don't know. We know only one thing, that we are going to hassle and we have to protect the pawn. Uh, right. So what is a very natural way and always when when 
when we are in the opening, right, and we don't know, and that's why I said it in, in, in my intro, um, we're not talking about the opening, right? We don't, you don't necessarily have to know openings in order to play a decent, decent chess, right? Of course, after a certain level, um, you can avoid it. You can, you know, go around and it's like, ah, oh, I'm going to avoid openings. You can't, obviously. But we're talking about principles. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure if you play on chess.com or leeches or chess 24, whatever, wherever you play, if you're lower level a little bit, you'll see, you know, random moves from random moves to, to, to random moves, right? Uh, in the opening. Um, and so we focus on natural moves that are happening for sure in the opening. And then, then I can decide. So for first off, I'm protecting the pawn with, with a natural move, right? What is it? What is it? What is it? So if, of, of course, it's going to be knight to c3, correct? It's always going to be knight to c3. Why? Because I'm protecting the pawn. That's one. And second thing is, is that I'm also developing and third, uh, you know, to mention this as well, I'm controlling the center with one more piece. So also very important. Okay. And then next move, I'm castling. And then if I want to, I can play bishop g5 or bishop e3. So that's also very important in terms of development. Of course, again, I'm going to talk about this uh, idea in the development part uh, or in the in, in those chapters, but um, something to something to remember. Okay. Um, yes, it does happen or it happens. It's 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 fine, actually, to to let's say to ignore this principle um but um but you know and because you know perhaps you're not going to get punished for it it is possible but why would i do something like it still doesn't it's it's still not a great uh explanation okay so let's move on bishop e7 and queen e2 again you can see that white is 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 making weird moves so the way white protects the pawn is uh, with the knight, uh, sorry, with the queen, that's the issue, not with the knight, <clears throat> not very good. Again, I'm not sure if the queen is going to e2, perhaps the queen is not going anywhere, perhaps the queen is going to f3, we do not know. What we know is that the king is going to castle, and perhaps white is trying to castle alongside, like, you don't have to force an idea. Just play the natural, good-looking moves. As long as you're playing those good-looking, natural, uh, principled moves, you are going to be fine no matter what the opening is. Again, right? So we're talking about more beginner levels where, you know, when you face a player on chess.com and you have, like, no idea what this is, right? Um, that happened to, to all of us, right? The opponent plays something absolutely ridiculous in the opening and you're like, okay, what is this? I haven't seen this before then you use these ideas because then you're going to have a, 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 um, a fine game. Of course, and now <clears throat> Black, um, you know, took advantage of this uh, inaccuracy, played d5, very nice. Uh, Bishop takes f6. Uh, White is, uh, is really struggling here <laughs> in the opening. Um, he makes all kinds of um, silly mistakes, uh, not developing properly, not controlling the center, um, making unnecessary, you know, and uncertain moves, um, uh, again, losing all kinds of, or, or exchanging uh, all of his uh, active pieces, let's say the knight on d4, the knight on f, uh, sorry, the bishop on g5, all kinds of weird moves, and, and black now, um, is going to have the initiative here very, very nicely. So bishop f6, bishop b3. There was no point, absolutely no point in um, in taking on f6. I guess he didn't want to, you know, lose the e4 pawn. That is understandable. But, you know, taking here would have been just as fine. Even you can go back or give a check. It would have been still a decent game. Sure, black does have the, the center, but... Uh, it's still better than giving up the bishop pair 
and still, you know, not controlling the center. Um, so that was uh, that was not the best. Of course, Lace White has a center pawn here. Um, that's for sure. But is it something that we that we you know is it, it was this something that was really worth it? Um, not not convinced, right? So Castle, uh, Castle and a5 white uh, sorry uh black is playing really well black is uh you know controlling uh, the um black is controlling the uh the center really well trying to develop their um, his pieces fast and and um you know with tempos very very nice white is clearly lacking development and um uh yeah and now white always has to react to to black's moves and then that's not necessarily what we want right we always want to have the initiative if that makes sense pawn takes uh, pawn takes z5 pawn takes z5 rook d1 okay so now black total control black has now the total control of the center um and now we go d4 and now as you can see we have indeed the center we have those center pawns white is lacking um the uh white is lacking a lot of development the knight is still on b1 the rook is still on a1 rooks are not connected not very uh not very good uh, we can even say that this position is already uh, a lot better for black so let's actually talk about here why is it important to control the center so uh, what have we learned from this game so far um, but basically, you know, if you control the center, if you control uh, the main squares, those main four squares, or at least two of them, right, at least two of them, so if you're white, the E4 and D4 squares, or if you're black, the E5, D5, just like in this situation, um, why? Well, first of all, the main thing is that you have space advantage. And that's very good, right? You have more space on the board, so obviously it is a lot easier for you to maneuver and activate your pieces, okay? These things are connected really well, and that's super important, okay? So, of course, so space advantage and being able to activate the pieces really well. Another thing is that is uh, that is very useful for, for the player who has the space advantage is that basically then the the position or the board is kind of like dividing into them you know and if i have the if i have the center control i'm controlling basically the whole board so then it's uh, it's going to be a lot easier for me to navigate on either sides because i have you know the territory i have the space and i can as i said i can move around i can maneuver around with my pieces and create more threats if that makes sense okay so that is the main reason why we have to take control of the center and and look this is also a great example and and of course uh, I'll show you uh, in a second and in, in, in the next uh, chapters, I'll show you more games where center is always important throughout the game. It doesn't necessarily have to be an opening principle, right? It's mostly going to be an opening principle, right? Because, you know, if you think about it, your first move is probably going to be e4, d4, c4, perhaps knight f3, maybe, but those four, one of those four moves, right? And so it's, you're immediately trying to take control of the center. Uh, but even in the middle game, it, or even later, if the pawns are still available, right, I'm still trying to control the center. There is... It's never too late, basically, to control uh, the center. Something to remember. Very, very important. C4. And um, uh, this was the, the basically the big mistake uh, or the decisive mistake, I feel like, in the game. And uh, I have been recording for, you know, almost 20 minutes. And we've been only... I have, I have been only been talking about one game. So... Um, I want to move on, of course. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I just don't want to talk about one uh, game. Um, although I 
I try to be as thorough as possible so we can we can draw as many conclusions as possible from one game and, and I'll learn everything <laughs> uh, almost everything um, but of course I want to show you different examples but um, so I, I I'm not going to show you the whole game now but at least definitely let's talk about the c4 move why was this a bad move so c4 c4 basically screams that hey i don't care about your center i don't mind you having the center controlling these main squares that we discussed that are important in the game right um in the center um i don't care i'm i'm going to follow my own plan and see what happens not necessarily the smartest call um, of his uh, career of uh, McDonald. Okay, so C4 was definitely a bad move. If your opponent controls the center by this much, your job is to either block it or try to, I don't know, minimize the damage or at least try to poke it or loosen it up or trying to like attack it or something, right? Try to fight back. With C4, you're not fighting back. You're not doing anything. You're basically like, hey, it's okay. Like, you do whatever you want. I don't care. Um, if you punish me, you punish me. I don't care. Risky. Risky business. And it's definitely not a smart thing to do. Right? And also, uh, positional-wise, why would you ever give your opponent a, uh, a protected pass pawn? Like, makes no sense. Again, we're talking about the the early um, early ish eighteen hundreds. So uh, again, opening principles and just principles and in, in general um, weren't as you know obvious as today. Uh, but uh, but hey, uh, we're here to learn. So uh, C four not a good move. Okay, Queen B six. Very good move. Um, I'm moving out of the uh, out of the pin, right? So um, I I didn't want to allow White to play Knight C3 and develop the Knight that way. So Queen B6, very nice move. Bishop C2. Um, one of the last few moves I'm showing here. Uh, White is being really sneaky. Um, you know, if Black takes on B2 again, I don't know if you've uh, seen any of my previous uh, video uh, courses. Uh, I always recommend stopping the video at one point or even watch it back if you have to think about these ideas on your own and and uh, if, if there's like a challenge just like in this one stop stop the video come come to a come to a I don't know to a solution and then uh, continue the, the video uh, so why is queen takes b2 uh, a losing move again you can stop the video and figure it out on your own of course if you see it, uh, you probably see it immediately because it's a discovered attack on h7, right? So uh, bishop sacrifices here and a discovered attack on b2 very nicely. So, of course, uh, black doesn't blunder this. Bishop b7, knight d2, trying to block the e4 square. Uh, now, but now rook e8. <clears throat> and again, tr I'm trying to push the pawn. Knight e4, bishop d8. Again, very good move. I'm not trading. Again, I have a very active bishop on the long diagonal on b7 i'm just trying to push f5 and e4 and control the center even more c5 go back f3 and bishop e7 bishop b7 is against knight d6 rook c1 and finally black plays f5 and you can see that the pawn like mass <laughs> right basically is just uh just overwhelming again please 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 do try to control the center as much as possible. Don't fall into the trap of McDonald. Again, this was a game from the Romantic era. <clears throat> and so uh, uh, players in, 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 in this era, they need some funky stuff. But I am sure that similar things happen on chess.com and lower levels. I've seen it myself. Uh, so... Um, something to learn from all right uh let's move on to the next game i want to show you more games uh, i talk too much sometimes i over explain stuff if if that's so <laughs> bear with me uh trying to be 
uh, thorough with my analysis. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on. All right. So the next game is a is a more like modern game uh, from a Hungarian grandmaster. Um, it's um, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately for for the Hungarian, uh, uh, I'm not. I, I shouldn't uh, be taking sides, but hey, I'm Hungarian after all, right? So um, this is a um, relatively unpleasant position for Black. Um, the Hungarian uh, Grandmaster is struggling here a little bit. Um, as black because white has this uh, really nice center okay so uh, this really nice center and um, the knight is uh, is stranded on a5 it's not doing a whole whole bunch on a5 it's a, it's obviously a passive knight um, but the main problem is and as I said in the previous game if you control the center you most of the time you can control the whole board and this is going to be uh, crucial so here this is a, actually a very interesting uh, moment white capitalizes on on the on the advantage that he has in the center and try to even you know um, try he tries to make it even better um, this is a, a more advanced example I would say but uh, the uh, the solution is quite simple in my opinion um, again you can stop the video try to come uh, try to come to a conclusion what do you think what is the best move what is the best plan realize that hey this is still an uh, this is almost like a, a, an end game pretty much an end game but if you remember my words from the last game it doesn't matter where you are sometimes we have these you know um these end games where there are more pawns in the center and if you can you want to control it no matter what so i hope you found the same uh, idea that why did with f4 beautiful beautiful move of course in, a, in an end game uh, activating the king would be uh, would be super important but instead he goes for uh, this f4 move very nice move um, because he tries to control the center even more uh, f4 black goes king f7 and now we go king f2 so he could have played e5 i think it would have been okay um you know of course it would have been um you know a different game so i don't want to you know dwell on it um uh, for for too long but yeah e5 would have been a, a a normal absolutely normal move of course e5 and um so I guess you know black could either take and play e6, but then he has to deal with d6. So e5 would have been interesting. Also, there are some g5 moves, but I can always you know counter it or um, yep uh, defend it with a g3. So that's not too bad. King f2 also a very principled move, of course, uh, trying to bring uh, the the king closer. So that's nice. Okay. A6. If he goes, if black goes e6, then I have knight b5, which is rather annoying. It's a double attack. Basically, I have this threat on d6 and I have this threat on a7. So you got to be careful here. Um, you don't want to do that. So black starts with a6, uh, precise move order, but now I, it allows me to play king e3, activating the king as early as possible. e6. Now he takes. Interesting choice by white he's not keeping the center any longer but he can uh, really keep it any longer or at least this dominantly i would say because if you go d6 uh, perhaps black has some sort of like e5 counter moves you got to be a little careful uh, i mean overall we're still talking about the grunfeld structure the grunfeld is rather dynamic you got to be careful but of course after e6 white simply takes on e6 bishop takes e6 Knight takes e6, king takes e6, king d4, and now you can see that uh, uh, the knight is still stranded on a5. I still have the center um, on e4 and f4, controlling the king a little bit. I have uh, the pawn majority on the king side slash center. Black has uh, black has it 
on the queen side but because i have a more active king i have a more active minor piece i am going to be the one who's going to create a pass pawn uh, faster or sooner okay king d7 and now i'm trying to infiltrate into the position by king c5 king b6 and again the bishop is overall uh, better in most cases than the knight in an open position and in this one this is an absolutely open dynamic position black has to be really careful but now i, I play king c5 overall this is where i'm going to stop uh, the the gameplay that how white actually approached that that you know middle game slash end game ish position was um was a uh, really nice precise and uh it was um it was a it was a nicely executed you know uh center control plan with f4 and then e5 and trying to bl bring the king closer very very nice all right uh i don't want to make the video too too long um i've only shown you two games but there are many more uh um or a few more not many more but a few more uh chapters uh, coming uh where i'll discuss the center or the importance of the center uh even further so uh, it's okay um we can learn uh many things just from two games but uh bear with me we'll um we'll look at uh, a few more all right so actually let's m move immediately on to the to the second video all right